The grilling season is here, and it's time to fire up the barbecue. We know that whether we use charcoal or propane, we're putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So we're back in the yard of Professor Steve Skirlos to grill him about this burning question. What are the environmental effects of barbecuing? There are actually a number of environmental impacts associated with grilling. We could talk about air emissions, we could talk about carbon footprint, uh, we could talk about the food that we put on the grill and the environmental emissions associated with that. And how can we minimize the environmental effects when we want to grill? So it really depends on which kind of grill that we're talking about. You know, if we're talking about a propane grill like this one, um, you know, th there isn't a whole lot you can do. First thing you want to do is to not warm it up too long because then you're just going to waste propane. Second thing you can do is to uh, put as much food on it as possible. So the more you cook at once, the more efficient you're going to be. Next thing you can do is keep the door closed as much as you can. And when you go and you change to a charcoal uh, barbecue, the, the things you have to think about are actually much more numerous. When you're using a charcoal grill, the first thing you need to think about is how you're actually starting the grill. So if you're using lighter fluid uh, versus a chimney starter, uh, you're probably doing something much worse off for the environment. You can think about lighter fluid a lot like you think about filling the gas tank of your car. They're volatile organic compounds that are drifting up into the atmosphere, and it's certainly something you don't want to use. You really don't need to use lighter fluid to start a grill anyway. Next thing you need to think about is the type of charcoal that you use. So charcoal is actually primarily wood. So when you think about a carbon footprint issue, um, you know, the wood actually is carbon neutral. But most brands of uh, charcoal you're going to buy actually have coal in them, and therefore there's some carbon impact associated with that and energy associated with producing that charcoal. After that, then, you're going to cook your food and um, think about what you do with the ash. You know, throwing it in, in the uh, garbage is one thing you can do with it, but it might be more environmentally conscious to try to condition your soil. You can look online for different recipes of how you can condition soil with ash from a charcoal grill. So how does using a grill compare to cooking inside, say, on a stovetop? Different stoves have different environmental impacts. In short, a gas stove is going to be more efficient than an electric stove. But either way, uh, if you're cooking for more than a couple of people, it's probably a better idea to move it outside onto a grill. Does it matter what you're cooking? Yeah, actually the big part of the story turns out to be what you're cooking. Now, if we're talking about red meat, we're talking about hamburger, the carbon emissions associated with producing the red meat are going to be 20 to 30 times higher than what it's actually going to take to cook the meat. Now if you switch the type of meat, maybe you're uh, cooking chicken instead, the carbon footprint associated with producing the meat, in terms of chicken this time, is going to be 10 to 15 times less than red meat. And of course now if you grill vegetables instead of uh, red meat, your carbon footprint is going to be reduced by 20 to 30 times, maybe up to 50 times even. What makes red meat so tough on the environment? There's a lot environmentally that goes into producing red meat. So there's the food that they eat, uh, there's fertilizer that goes into the crops that they eat, uh, there may be some land clearing that goes into producing the crops that the cattle eat, and then there's the methane emissions from the cattle themselves. The other issue to think about with red meat is the water consumption. If we're talking about a couple pounds of red meat, uh, maybe four half pound hamburgers there, we're talking probably more than 2,000 gallons of water associated with producing that meat. Typically when we think about water consumption, we think about showers and we think about sprinklers, but uh, less often we're thinking about the food we eat, but when it comes to red meat, that's one of the big issues. So it looks like what we're cooking matters more than how we're cooking it. But hey, this probably isn't the first time you've heard that we ought to be eating more vegetables.